Our subject for tonight is inventing jobs. I am Adrian Pelkis. Uh, again, as I told you, I've been doing product development for 30 years, have helped launch dozens of companies, and been in the involvement of hundreds of projects from initial concept through design to completion. Before we begin, though, I really want to remind you that there is a threat to your way of life right now that you need to be aware of, and that is these changes in our patent laws. Our patent laws are what allow you to benefit from your ideas. And if we don't have that benefit, that basic American right anymore, we're not going to be the same country anymore. It's that essential. It's that important. It's being sponsored by companies like Google. And it would give them a very, very unfair advantage over you everyday inventors. Please get involved. Support me on the effort to stop this destruction of our American way of life. Thank you. I'm going to be expressing something to you tonight that is a process I was taught by my dad, who was a master architect, that he developed. I benefited from inheriting that. A process called APE, Approach, Plan, and Execute. Many times you hear of people that have a whole trailer full of stuff. They don't know where to sell it, how it's going to sell. Uh, they can't sell it even for the price they're hoping for. These are all very avoidable problems. Uh, what I uh, attest is that we, we discussed tonight a way to approach what you're getting into, what are the questions involved, planning what your possible solutions could be, then executing them. You then add metrics later to follow up to see how effective that was. But I call this process a approach, plan, and execute. Any project you're working on, if you take this logical sequence, you have a much better chance of success. Your ideas are business opportunities, every one of them. Uh, but I'm going to share with you tonight ways to give these ideas uh, enough of a review that you'll have a little more heads up if they're really worth pursuing. If you're a creative person, take the evaluation approach, and if it doesn't pan up, have another great idea. Getting married to your idea is a way to sink and lose a lot of time, money, effort, friends, contacts. So. What I'd like you to do to begin is just answer these questions. Now, this is available on, our, on my website. It's been available for over a decade now. What this is is an approach to look at your idea from the first stage, asking yourself about estimated profitability. You're asking yourself actually 10 questions as a whole. This test allows you to come up with a score. Simple scoring and weighing is an approach to be objective about your idea. What this list of 10 items does, though, is, allow, is at least make you think about subjects you may not have thought about. You may not have the answers, which proves to you you might want to find out a little bit more. So let's go through these and what they mean and how you come up with a reasoning for it. Estimated profitability, if you have a five-time multiple, four-time multiple, three-time multiple, two-time multiple, or one. Multiple, again, your cost of sales over sale, uh, uh, cost of manufacturing. Uh, obviously, you like to have a high multiple. Five or better, you can start bringing in distributors, master distributors. You can do multi-level things. If you have a very small margin, you're selling one. You're selling your, by yourself probably on a website. Not that that can't be a revenue stream, but I, I also uh, want you to know that when I created this chart, it's uh, you want to have all of these factors to your benefit, especially if you're going to be approaching investors. So bear that in mind. A lot of this is tailored for that. If you're doing something that's for yourself, special circumstances, if it's your own research that you're doing, uh, if it's philanthropic, if you're just trying to advance science, this probably may not even apply, but still think of these things. When it comes to commercializing things, these are important subjects. Your technical complexity. Again, you give yourself a higher score, the simpler it is, and the more things you have to do to actually figure out how this thing gets done, the lower the score becomes. Kind of logical there. Okay. Next subject to talk about and look into is what's the industry size? Uh, you'd like to have a, a, a small part of a huge industry. The bigger the industry, the bigger that little small part really can still amount to. So there, again, logically, the smaller the whole industry size, uh, the lesser of a pie there is to share in your potential profits from it. Uh, statistics from that can be found very easily, industry sizes. Factors of how many competitors are there? Now, I've heard a lot of people, there's no competitors out there. Well, there's somebody that has something similar, so don't discard that. Consider if there's less than four, more than four, and of course, the more competitors are, the lower the score is going to be as far as the potential profitability for this. The uh, 
concern about the uh, patents. Um, you know, there's there's 20 ways to patent a mouse trap. That's been proven. I think there's probably 20 applications a year on new ways to patent mouse traps. Um, we, what what would need to be done here is for this is to figure out from some preliminary searches how many patents as a whole are out there. How deep is this pool? If it's less than four, or if it's more than 100, again is why you scale this this way. Um, it's uh, I have found times where I've done searches on things, and I found there's more than 10,000 patents listed in a certain area. I was doing work once looking for child finder type devices, and <laughs> tens of thousands of patents. Uh, to boil that down and effectively figure out what you're really confronted with can be a task. You start by doing it yourself. Oftentimes, you'll end up uh, recruiting some assistants, patent agents, and, and firms. Um, the IP uniqueness. Okay, so once you've gone through that process, are you totally clear? There's nothing else like that. Again, to whatever, uh, to what the extent is that you feel comfortable, or your patent agent is telling you you have freedom to operate. Here's the answer. Sometimes given is a huge factor in this. Uh, if you're going to be up against direct competition in these areas, I mean, think about it as you're thinking of what, why is this product worth developing? These are aspects to consider. The regulatory agencies are how many hurdles are you going to have to pass to get to market? Um, medical products, for example, the, uh, the avenues to get all that through FDA. Then you have specialty things with UL if there's certain avenues of technology that have to be um, under certain guidance issues. So the, the more hurdles you have as far as regulatory agencies go, again, the lower the score goes. It's just that much more complicated. It takes that much more time, effort, and resources to get through. Um, that's uh, related to the acceptance. Uh, there are some things you just can't do in the United States. Uh, uh, one of my favorite examples is the rest of the world uses a procedure to help cure a number of diseases called uh, ultraviolet blood irradiation. It's very much like dialysis. But they irradiate your blood and it kills the disease. Well, we don't use that in the United States because pharmaceutical companies have lobbied the FDA so strongly the FDA won't touch us with a 10-foot pole. That's a disservice to you Americans. We don't get the best quality of care. I can go on on a number of ways that can be illustrated, but that's the, the biggest one. So just because uh, you know there are agencies and you have technology and it will work doesn't mean the U.S. is going to allow it. You have to decide that right up front while you're thinking about your idea. Otherwise, you could be in a long road of major issues and have to get major supporters to help make changes. And even then, it doesn't always work. Um, by the way, that ultraviolet blood irradiation, I believe it was in Russia, they went the next step and they have a laser-tuned blood irradiation technology and they can specify specific viruses that they're able to destroy by using pulse light technologies. Um, next, faster, next factor, of course, determines what's your development cost. Uh, is this something you can do out of pocket? Are you going to have to in, uh, sell the house? <laughs> Where is it? You can move the scale, by the way, as, as I often do. Some people, you know, that, that's pocket change. and. Other people, this is their life savings. So, uh, but realistically, look at what the development costs are going to be by estimates. How are you going to? Do you have those resources? If you're going to have to get them, you have to take a different approach as far as presenting your idea to start usually with friends and family uh, to, to convince them to fund. We'll talk about that a little bit later too. Your estimated unit sales from the first year. Um, please be a realist. I, I, I get scared when people give me this answer. You got to have some real strong reasoning, otherwise we got to have a reality check. Most often, you're talking about in the first year, just getting started in here. But uh, that, that's the way of it. So you, you look at all those things. And once you've looked at all those things, you've got a, a scoring. I look at this and think if you've got a 39 to 50, if you double, that's like getting a B on your test. If you've scored a B, it's a good idea. Let's talk about it some more. If it, if it isn't that good, then you know, review what those issues are. But if they're not conquerable, don't dwell on it. You're going to be losing your time, your life, your money, your energy, your resources. So uh, uh, take this exam, go through it, and uh, I'm, I'll assure you, you'll be glad you did. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of different flavors and flares of ways to actually plan for a product launch. Uh, this one is a, an Excel spreadsheet that I created that looks at the development of a simple electronic device like a motion detected thing or a sound activated thing or some rather small little electronic type device. I'm going to show you in two different slides, this one and this one, the entire process to go from start to a presentable uh, device in eight to nine weeks. Now, this is for a simple project. I'm going to show another example later, a little more complex, but on this, 
<clears throat> by the way, these are color coded because of the, uh, the fortes of the people involved, the specialities. I uh, have color coded for that reason. And you're going to find that they're uh, in sequence, and in consequence of one, you trigger another event. All products that we that I talk about with people, we begin with the did you you know sketching it, capturing that sketch, web searching right off, patent searching right off, and then go through that eval matrix I just showed you, you know, right off the bat, first week. Once you're satisfied, there's nothing else like that. It's really nowadays you're going to have to think about the provisional patent filing on the very first start of your venture here. Analyzing the concept. Once you've got that pat provisional patent filed, you can talk about it. So bringing together a focus group is doable because it's been protected. The focus group gives you the results of uh, what the pushback prices would be, ergonometric factors, anything that the focus group wants to give you, it's, you get that because that's you know that's a rule that runs the design is what the customers want. Um, getting that information and charting the results allows you to then uh, <clears throat> start working on writing the specs. You don't write the specs until you've gotten some feedback, even on just the general concept. Again, this is for an electromechanical thing, so all things become re related to just that. Sketching mechanisms, actually, after you have a sketch, you can request a mechanical engineer to define that sketch further, get you the CAD drawings. Uh, we sketch circuits quite often to start. Uh, from just sketching the circuit, we can go out and find out what kind of components are going to be necessary for it, and I often breadboard the circuit. That's just a rough working model in a quick fashion that's fabricated to test the circuit working. Once that's been proven, then we design the circuit board. If you call, follow these through, you'll see one step follows another. It's a very logical sequence for that. Um, the design mechanics, uh, once you've got that quote back, um, the first drawings are done. You can send that out for your production costs at that point and get the estimates for production. Uh, you can uh, get the uh, 3D printing done. Uh, we assemble our circuit boards. And at the end of this whole sequence, we're actually building and testing our first working models. OK, now concurrent to all of that is somebody else probably in the company that's really working on the business development side of this. And this is just to get you to the point where you have a good working model and a presentation that you can go pitch with. Or maybe it's for the license agreement that is your plan to exit with. If you're building a new company and this product is the keystone product for that company, you want to have the presentation. Even nowadays to go on to Kickstarter. You should be well thought out, prepared, and have video tools ready to launch from and business plans to support what you're offering the public. So again, in, 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 in the same time you're working on th this approach, on the technical side of it, you're working on the business plan. So we start off with what kind of logos and trademarks you'll be thinking of. You're filing that. You're coming up with the market statistics, competition statistics, and you can formulate all your costs. Then you're accumulating all of this data. Listing possible partners, um, that's personal, that's professional, creating a circle of advocates, connections for yourself. The market plan and materials design comes after, again, you've acquired the information and statistics so you know about your business. The uh, <clears throat> renderings and costs are done. The video screenplay is a, a really uh, concerted approach to uh, formulating the one minute quick video that shows the, uh, the pain the people have now, what the problem is. Uh, it's a comparison video, really. Uh, the pain the problems people have, and oftentimes that's done in black and white, and it's, you know, people can't fry an egg without it falling out. And the, then you show the benefits of your product as a comparison. And that's off of when it goes to color, and it's, everybody can do everything quite simply. Anyway, you're creating this little one minute video because you're going to embed that in your presentation. That's the big, the video does a thousand words for you. Uh, so the process of writing the storyboard, uh, taping it, editing it, and getting that video together is a job in itself. So we allow time for this uh, in this whole chart. Uh, <clears throat> and then we embed it in the PowerPoint presentation. The PowerPoint presentation has uh, three to five factors in it. The factors are, well, again, what is the pain, the problem, what is your product, the solution, and where's the profit going to happen? Those are the main three things you talk about, especially for license agreements. That's about as far as you have to go. If you're actually raising the funds, you're going to have to add uh, who's the people, where's the team that's going to help this happen, and then where's the money going to come back? What's the ROI? That's the you know, use of funds sort of thing. So <clears throat> this approach allows you to structure, plan, designate names, team members, and if you follow the plan at the end, you are able to present 
what was just once a new concept. Not everything's doable in eight weeks. Some things take years, obviously, especially more complex things. Uh, this is, might be more appropriate way for you to look at if that is, in fact, what your idea might entail, uh, to look at what you're going to be looking into and getting into and what your needs are and what the actual milestones are and the financial planning. This is very similar for most high-tech projects. This is actually modeled after a Connect uh, plan that was released years ago. I've regenerated using new terms on this. I look at the first portion of it as you're raising the seed money, you're getting your planning done, your research, your filing for patents, your uh, uh, most essential uh, development work. Um, that leads you to where the funding gets you into phase one where you're doing proof of concept. Once you've got proof of concept, you can start doing the test for that. By the time the tests are successful, you're looking for the launch money. The launch money lets you release Gen 1. Um, well, again, you know, the, raising the launch money allows you to do the design for manufacturing. That leads you to Gen 1. The design for manufacturing is when you go from proof of concept to a design for manufactured product. Then you get released for Gen 1. You've run through your launch money. By then, you're usually going into a Gen 2 device, and you're already thinking about a merger or an acquisition or some sort of great exit. Anyway, that's the comparison between what a, a simple little, I want to go and license this uh, tchotchke type product or a quick, uh, simple product to a very complex research-based uh, or engineering-based development work, okay? Uh, to that end, if uh, your project's of, of that uh, depth and breadth, uh, there's a couple of great uh, resources here in town to help you get along through this whole process. And I'm really pleased, in, in fact, to be involved with one group here in town called Connect. Uh, Connect has a program they call Springboard. And Springboard is a process for you to approach and get all kinds of fantastic support. I'm going to show you here in, a, in the next few minutes all the things they offer. It's a very structured approach for you to organize your plan, uh, plans, uh, to bring together a preliminary team, to have your ideas evaluated. Uh, to make sure that they are uh, presentable and uh, fathomable and, uh, uh, can, and, and aren't snickerable. And it leads to uh, their introdu introducing you to different investment groups that are in town, such as the Tech Coast Angels, which is one of the larger uh, syndicated now investment groups in, in the United States. They, they started here in Southern California. Um, the process uh, has a lot to do with the first getting involved by uh, uh, in meeting an entrepreneur in residence. Vince and I are entrepreneurs in residence with this uh, group. And if you're interested, we'd be happy to introduce you to the group, champion you in. Um, so they have a great checklist for moving you through the process, uh, a very organized plan where your timing and schedule is actually uh, well thought out as how you're going to go through their program. By the way, there's no cost to this program. Um, again, they'll bring entrepreneurs and residents. I think there's more than 400 now. Uh, when we're all specialists, most in different areas, but the idea is when, if you're doing a food company, if you're doing a sports product, whatever, they'll bring in the experts here in town that have been there, done that, succeeded, and are now available to mentor. And they act as uh, mentors uh, on your project to help you get it launched. The uh, good news is they just released a brand new handbook about this whole thing. And you can see from the table of contents what it contains, preparing, uh, getting the mentoring teams together, uh, who we are as entrepreneurs and residents, what is the resources here in town, and others is what they go through. You'll have marketing finance experts. The uh, marketing panels, finance panels, and dry run panels, and final panels are the stages that you go through to prepare. And after this kind of coaching and training, you're prepared to talk to the top VCs. I mean, you will learn what it takes to make an eight-minute presentation that is right on the money, gets people excited, and makes them want to invest in your company. The capital competition is right here in town. We take the best people who have, out of the program and actually get them in front of the number of investment banks and, and, and groups here in town. Um, <clears throat> they actually have resources. We, get, they have, we have MBA students that perform marketing research and uh, will build finance models. Uh, they have legal uh, resources available. A uh, number of the universities here in town uh, have students help you do your legal work as part of their learning process. Uh, the last two things that are here are really what to me I think are the, the fun ones, uh, especially Connect with Connect. This is twice a year. 
and uh, try to get yourself into one of these events because it's a fantastic opportunity to network with hundreds and hundreds of business leaders here in San Diego that are sharing what is going on with them every month and what their uh, pains and tribulations and successes are and we network and uh, we can share resources it's just a great event connecting with connect um, on the social side, they've even recently uh, started a little club on the side there where uh, graduates from Springboard get together and just socialize and share their life experiences, what's going on. Just amazing ways to can network. Okay? And that was, again, one of the things I promised you here is we're going to show you how to, to, to network. This is one, one great, great example. Okay? Um, I was wondering, did Teresa show up tonight? No. Well, I thought Teresa was going to show up from SCORE. That's another group that is quite helpful in uh, helping people organize their business launches and by bringing in people that will help, again, mentor you. Well, that's my presentation for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it very much. Thank you.